Hi. A few days ago, I had a conversation with my friend uh, Jenny, and I was trying to explain how I feel this time of the year is a paradox, and I hope I will be more uh, clear than I was the other day with her. No, it's just that in this part of the world where I am, well, the weather is mild, uh, daylight is increasing, and and we feel, you know, this boost of energy, and and we want to say, yes, we survive another winter. At the same time, the church sends us the message of, no, this is no time of rejoicing. This is the time for Lent. It's strange because um, in my context, and I would say for the wide majority of the Western world, uh, we live in a secular, secularized society. The church is not in the middle of everything. It's more on the fringe. But the author and the commentators I've read uh, this week to prepare for this first Sunday of Lent, and I would say um, they are fairly liberal. That's uh, what I'm reading. All those author and commentators are seems to double down kind of uh, negate, not negating their secular world, but reinforce the message that this is a time of introspection. This is a time for cleansing. This is a time for privation. And we ought to find something to give up. And sometimes it feels like the more miserable you will be, the better it will be. It feels like it's almost like a, a performance. Uh, I don't know if you have friends on Facebook like that, but uh, you will see an entry. Uh, someone said, well, for uh, land, I will give up uh, wine, chocolate, or, or Facebook. And first of all, let, let us say that this is these are first world issues, you know. Um, if your sacrifice is giving up wine, let's just say that your basic needs are really covered and you're cutting in something that is really in luxury. But deeper than that, it's, it's a feeling that you have to not just do it, you have to prove it, to demonstrate it, to showcase it to the world. You just you don't just disappear from Facebook and maybe people won't notice. No, you have to make sure that on Facebook that everyone knows about it. It makes me think of um, celebrities or influencers on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It feels like it's stage. You know that that feeling that. Uh, it don't feel natural, it's staged, it's for the show, it, it's a tad fake sometimes. It feels like that's a, a performance, a showing up to everyone. Like I said, often land was not created to make sure that we are miserable for a month and a half. Uh, or it's not uh, about fasting, or it's not about being sad all week long. Lent is a time of preparation. It's a journey. It's, um, it's a path that begins on Ash Wednesday and lead us to Good Friday and Easter morning. And one cannot, I, and I'm putting both of them because one cannot go uh, without the other one. It's a process. And of course, it's always easier to say, you know, uh, I will give up one thing and I will be okay and I don't have to think about it and I'm, I can feel good about myself. But 
when we begin a process of preparation, yes, it asks to look at ourselves and it asks also to see what can be done. This is why I think Lent is an invitation to celebrate everything we have received, acknowledge our blessings, and it's also a time to maybe change what needs to be changed to improve ourselves. It's a time also to repair what might have been broken, relationship, the way we deal with one another, the, day, the way we deal with other nations. It's a time we can say, yes, we are still alive. Thank God. Light is coming back. Spring is almost there. So let us prepare ourselves because what is coming will be amazing. And we want to be ready to fully celebrate it. Have a great time of Lent. And I hope that we will continue to this conversation. Until then, take care of yourself. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. Bye-bye.